looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Raising Healthy Humans. I am your host, Courtney, a mom, movement specialist and health coach who wants to help you create healthier habits, move more, and gain confidence all while raising healthy children. As a busy and sometimes overwhelmed mom of three myself, I understand that it can be difficult to find ways to eat healthy and work out, all while caring for and raising our children. It is my goal to help provide you with the information you need to help feel better about yourself while raising healthy humans. If you are dealing with that midsection weight gain and you might be questioning why, one thing I want you to think about is whether or not you are in perimenopause. And for many, you may not realize that perimenopause can occur earlier than what you may have heard. I did not know that I was actually in perimenopause at about 37 and 38 years old. I started dealing with heavier periods, um, anxiety. I mean, I always had anxiety, but uh, this was a different level of anxiety. But I was dealing with heavier periods, shortened cycles. They were coming three weeks apart, and I had some other things that were going on. And I did not know that this was perimenopause. And I wanted to make sure that you understood that that these are some of the symptoms. These are some of the things that may be occurring, and it can occur as early as 35 years old. For most of us, it'll be around 40, but depending on your lifestyle habits, whether you're under-exercising, over-exercising, the way you're eating, the toxins in our environment, all of this, any type of drugs that you may have taken may be affecting your cycle and may be causing you to go into perimenopause a little bit earlier. So it can be happening as young as 35. So what are some of the signs of perimenopause? Like I had mentioned, heavier bleeding. If you're noticing your cycle is heavier, you may be dealing with perimenopause. If you are also noticing a shortened cycle, so maybe you normally went 28 days between periods and now you're dealing with them more often, this also is a sign of perimenopause. Increased anxiety. What happens is we start to lose progesterone. And when we start to lose progesterone, that is our calming hormone. And obviously, we're not as calm. We're a little bit more on edge. So that may be um, another thing that you're dealing with. Hungrier than normal estrogen levels as they continue to spike. Um, You might be hungrier than normal. You might notice that you're nitpicking at little things. One of the things that I noticed (laughs) myself is I started to hear my husband chewing. Like I've always heard everyone chew in the house, but this went to another level. And I have since begun to understand that these little minor, these annoyances are, um, they could be like this uh, agitation that we're dealing with in perimenopause. Heart palpitations. This again is another one that I started dealing with when I was teaching fitness classes. And I kept trying to figure out what it is. I think it's low iron. I think it's my allergy to corn. It's, you know, it's this, it's this, it's this. Well, it had something to do with magnesium. I wasn't getting enough magnesium in my diet, but it also had to do with perimenopause. So if you are dealing with heart palpitations, maybe you never dealt with them before and you're dealing with them now, start to look into that breakthrough bleeding. This is where maybe you're bleeding um, earlier than what you're supposed to, usually at ovulation. And then joint pain actually has a lot to do with it as well. 
We do want to make sure that we're decreasing our inflammation, our inflammatory markers, especially as we get older, because this will help with some of that joint pain. So those are some of the signs. And, you know, one thing that midsection weight, that's also wanted, what I wanted to speak about today is that midsection weight gain. You start to get it. I you know, I will raise my hands first for you ladies. This, I am not creating this podcast because I know all and I have conquered the midsection. No, (laughs) I deal with it too. And um, this is an area where you really have to start to pay attention to things and accept. I mean, there is definitely acceptance involved in all of this as well. And I'll get into that more. But Today, I just want to talk about perimenopause. Um, During this time, stress levels start to increase due to life and the decreasing progesterone, and you're more likely to become insulin resistant. So this is insulin is in the blood and the cells no longer will take the insulin in. So these, um, if you are dealing with, I'm sorry, if you are eating sweets, carbs, drinking alcohol, drinking caffeine, um, you know, all the fun stuff. If if you're apt to be one of those people who enjoys bread and pasta and all of those things, you may notice that you're becoming more insulin resistant. And this is very common during perimenopause. These factors are going to lead to this midsection weight gain. So that's why we need to work on decreasing that. The other thing you may notice is, and this goes along with the over, are you, episode five, are you overdoing your workout? And this has to do with when you work out, you may notice your body is changing even though your workout's the same, the diet's the same, all of that. You may notice it's you're dealing with a harder recovery. Um, I started to know this. I was still teaching my online fitness classes. I was teaching in-person classes and I was fatigued all the time. Like I just could not get over the hump. I, you know, would think, okay, maybe it had to do with what I'm eating. So I tried to clean up my diet and I just, I was dealing with some joint pain. You might be dealing with achy knees, achy shoulders, things like that. And then also um, just feeling more tired than normal when you're doing your workouts, especially your high intensity workouts. So what happens is you're dealing with the stressors of life, right? And then add to that, exercise is a stressor whether we like it or not. Yes, it's a good stressor, but when you're adding on all these other stressors, it is a stressor as well. So if you're already dealing with higher cortisol levels because of all the other things you have going on in your life, and then you add an intense workout to it, you are going to continue to increase that cortisol response. And then you're also trying to go at it every day, right? You're trying to get your workout in because you're, you, you know, you've been told you need to work out every day and you're doing it every day. So then you're not ever resting. This is going to create that cortisol response and um, you may not be losing that midsection weight. So it's important to understand that you may, once you get into your mid-30s, I honestly, I started noticing it early 40s for myself. And then the older I've gotten, the more it has raised its ugly head to me and said, you need to chill out more. So making sure that you're slowing down, doing lower impact workouts, maybe not as intense, Leaning into bar style workouts, Pilates style workouts, heavy strength. So it doesn't mean you need to take out weights. You want to maybe not do as many reps and increase your weights so that you're getting a heavier, like a harder, so to speak, workout strength wise, but not as intense with the jumping around. Um, We don't want to be doing as many HIIT workouts during this time. I've dropped mine down to one a week, 
And that seems to be pretty good for my body. And you're just going to have to play with it. Um, that is one thing that I am learning in perimenopause is really listening to my body. And you'll hear me say this over and over again. You need to listen to your body. You need to um, pay attention to what it's saying and understand that the way you've always done it may not be the way you need to do it moving forward. The other thing is intermittent fasting. So there are a few thoughts on this. And I'm here again, I'm going to say you need to really listen to your body um, because different people are going to say different things. And that is one thing you need to really notice when you're looking at all of the information that's out there. There is a camp that says do, there's a camp that says don't. You know you best. It's time to get in tuned with yourself and listen, because your body is telling you everything. You know, you've heard your body keeps the score. Like your body is communicating with you constantly. And it's time to really get rid of all the extra noise in your life and really start to listen to what your body's trying to tell you. And for some of you, intermittent fasting may work. But then there's others who might be dealing with a lot of that cortisol stress, a lot of those stressors that I was talking about earlier, where adding one more stressor, because intermittent fasting is a stressor to the body, positive, it can be positive, but for some of us, it's not. And if your body is stressed, then you may not want to do it. So again, I usually recommend at least a 12-hour fast. This is what your body should go through. A 12 to 14-hour fast is a normal fast. More than that, you're going to need to play with it, tweak it, work with a nutritionist, or really just listen to your body during that time. So during this time, how can we start to decrease the stress? Because what you're hearing from me is that, you know, this stress is occurring, this perimenopausal state has to do with a lot of stress. This cortisol is rising, which is creating this midsection weight gain. What do we do? What do we do about it? There's tons of stress that we're dealing with, whether you're dealing with, you know, um, Your kids and all the activities, I can speak for myself, all the activities that I'm going to on a daily basis, this constant feeling of on edgeness that I'm feeling. Um, Some of you might be dealing with aging parents with the difficulty of that as well. And then, you know, your job being at a certain point in your life where you're now looking ahead and you're realizing that... um, you know, time is limited. I, you know, I look back and um, I'm like, wow, those 48 years of, wow, they've gone by quick. And um, knowing that, you know, I mean, if I'm lucky, I'll have another 48 years, but, um, you know, that those years are going to be more limited um, than what they've been thus far. Hopefully not for a very long time. But, you know, what can you start to do to help with this? And you're, you've heard it. You've heard it all. You create a morning routine. You find time to meditate. And, and I want to make sure this is clear. I want you to know that meditation is more of kind of like a mindset We don't have to sit there and listen to anything specific. One thing that I have been trying to do more recently is instead of grabbing for my phone in times of quiet, just sitting in that quiet. That is a form of meditation, just sitting in the quiet, going outside, sitting and looking at... um, you know, the the leaves, or I'm sorry, the trees swaying, the clouds moving, all of that is a form of meditation. It's letting the mind quiet down and just be. The more you can practice this throughout your day, I think this kind of takes that edge off that I was talking about. The other thing you need to work on is decrease your carb intake. 
I know. I don't like hearing it myself. <laughs> I enjoy my carbs, but um, we've got to decrease the carbs. We've got to decrease the sugar. We've got to keep our blood sugar more stable so that we're not dealing with these responses, these insulin responses, because we're dealing with insulin resistance or we're becoming more insulin resistant. So making sure that you're keeping yourself more level. And if you are going to have those carbohydrates, knowing what to do to kind of uh go against it, so to speak. I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of the word while I'm talking, but that um, if I'm going to have carbs, then I also need to make sure that I'm moving. I'm going out for a walk right after or something to help keep that blood sugar stable. So my muscles are pulling that glycogen in rather than it running through my blood and then depositing in my midsection. So that's another thing that you need to focus on. And then like I mentioned with the workouts, uh, I would really encourage you to start strength training more. And this doesn't mean you have to go to the gym. I offer um, classes. I offer 6 a.m. classes. Um, that's Eastern Standard Time. But then I also offer a healthy mom community where every day we are doing workouts. They are not intense workouts. Um, they're, you know, you may get one high intensity or two high intensity workouts a week. But most of these workouts are lower intensity bar Pilates style workouts. You can do in as little as five minutes up to 15, maybe 20 minutes. I don't usually go that long with my workouts, um, but anywhere from five minutes to 15, 20 minutes where we are working on strength training. Um, and like I mentioned, core training yoga, stretching, things like that, which can help. The more you strength train, um, the your muscles take in glycogen. So you are, the more muscle you have, the less insulin resistance you will deal with. The other thing that is occurring at this time, as well as this joyous perimenopause, is you're also going to be losing muscle each year and are more apt to be struggling with sarcopenia. So if you're one of those that tries to do all your um, weight loss or controlling your weight through nutrition, this is the point that it's going to start working against you if you are not finding ways to do strength training as well. And understanding that strength training can be you working in your garden, working around your house for those DIYers who like to do a lot of activities um, in your house, redoing flooring, redoing um, furniture. You know, that's a lot of heavy lifting and moving things. So that may be enough strength wise for you. So it doesn't have to always be carrying around heavy weights. Um, but understanding that if you're not doing that, that is going to affect you as you get older and um, will also affect your mobility and your longevity and not so much maybe how long you live, but how well you live, right, for the length of time, how mobile you are. So making sure that you're doing that as well. And then the other thing for that um, decreasing stress to help with the cortisol is hugging your kids and your husband. That's going to create that oxytocin response, which is going to help drive down cortisol levels. So all of these things are what we tend to do naturally in life. Unfortunately, we are becoming very distracted as a society, and these things are getting um, put on the back burner for a lot of us. We get very consumed in our phones and um, aren't doing some of these things. So I would encourage you to take a step away from your phone and um, hug your kids, strength train, do, you know, eat healthy, take a minute just to do some mindless um, reflection. Doesn't even have to be reflection, just kind of just be and hopefully that will help. Also make sure to join us over in our Facebook community. It's 
Healthy Moms Raising Healthy Humans, but you can also find it by going to RaisingHealthyHumans.com and there'll be a link right there to join the community. You'll also be able to see the ways that you can join our program if you're interested in movement snacks and healthy habits. That is where you're going to find the information. I hope you all have a wonderful day and make sure to keep moving. I hope you enjoyed this episode and found something to take away to help you practice healthier habits, move more, or raise healthy children. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or leave us a review to help us reach more moms just like you. Head to RaisingHealthyHumans.com to join the free community or learn how you can begin practicing more habit stacking and movement snacks in your own daily life.